So you've decided you want to add boost. The question now, how do you select the right turbo? Well, that's easy. Just follow the map. Now the question is, how do you read the map? Hello everybody, I'm Richard Holder, and before we start our discussion on compressor maps, that's right, turbo compressor maps, welcome to the channel. I know what you're thinking, compressor maps are very confusing, Richard, there's all kinds of things going on, there's islands and there's numbers and there's lines, how am I going to understand a compressor map? Well, I give you this guarantee. By the time you finish watching this video, you will understand compressor maps. Thanks to some super richy compressor map hacks. That's right. You will understand compressor maps enough to select a turbo for your combo. And here's how. Okay, guys, let's jump right in and take a look at compressor maps. This is basically your very bare bones, basic description of compressor maps. So you'll understand what you're looking at and how to use them. We're not going to go into depth. We're not going to make it very complicated. We're not going to use a ton of math here. I'm just going to show you what's going on and how I look at them and convert them very easily. I think it's a very simple way. And then once you understand that, you'll be able to go to the next levels and get even more and more information from a compressor map. But basically, what is a compressor map? A compressor map in its simplest form tells you what the turbo, the compressor side or the cold side of the turbo, what it will flow and at what pressure ratio or what boost level it is flowing that at. So we dry intersections between those two and find out, hey, it flows this much at this much boost, it flows this much at this much boost, it flows this much at this much boost. And in each one of those intersections, we can determine how efficient the turbo is. So how do I read this compressor map? How can I get more information from this? Well, the first thing you have to do is understand what both sides mean and how I convert them. Now I'm gonna get a lot of a lot of email and, and comments about this, but what I I do to make it easy down here we see this is I'm gonna go ahead and be able to underline this so down here compressor flow pounds per minute see all these numbers 24 38 45 54 all these numbers over here that is airflow and the way that I convert that so I understand it better I convert it directly to power so if we multiply every one of those numbers by 10 we get the amount of power that that airflow will support. I know it's not exact, but it's very, very close. So again, we have 240 horsepower, 380, 450, 540, et cetera, all the way out to a 1,050 horsepower. This turbo doesn't quite go out there, but it gets very close. So at the bottom, very simple. Multiply the number if it's given in pounds per minute by 10, you have the amount of horsepower that that turbo will support. So what's on the other axis? Well, the other axis over here is something called pressure ratio. We're not going to go into the math on how they get pressure ratio. We'll do that maybe in part two of how to understand compressor maps. But basically I convert this also because it makes it easy. Just like the compressor flow we multiplied by 10, I take the pressure ratio and what I do is convert it to boost. It's not an exact conversion, but again, it gets you a really good idea. So one atmosphere is naturally aspirated. So two atmospheres, because an atmosphere is 14.7 pounds of boost, at 2.0, I'm going to go ahead, this is 14.7 PSI. 2.0 is 14.7 PSI. So 3.0, we're going to add another atmosphere to that. We don't have 3.0 on our map here, but this would be 29.4 and on up. We would add, if we go up to 4.0, which would be up here, that would be 44.1 pounds, so a lot of boost. 0.1 PSI, and all of these multi multiply out in any range in between all of these absolutes here. So 2.0, 14.7 pounds, 3.0, 29.4, 4.0, 44.1, and if you went up to 5.0, it would be a whopping uh, 58.8 pounds of boost. So it would be quite a bit. So that's how we understand the compressor maps. One side is boost, the other side is airflow. Now all we have to do is figure out on our combination where the intersection is for both of these, and we can figure out what turbo we should pick for our combination. So let's Check that out. Okay, now that we understand a little bit more about what the different axes are on our compressor map, down here we got compressor flow in pounds per minute. Multiply those numbers by 10 and we have horsepower. On the other side of pressure ratio, we I showed you how to convert that to boost. So now let's take a look at the numbers that are in the middle and don't worry, we're gonna go over these like basically one at a time so it's easy to understand. Starting with this number right here in the middle, this is 0.78. 
this is the highest island of efficiency for the turbo. So if you run the turbo where it's running anywhere in this island all in here, it will be at 0.7 or 78% efficient basically. And that's the highest one for this particular turbo. And I'm gonna show you exactly why that's important. And actually that there's a pretty good range. If we see our island starts way down here, if we draw a line, we see what kind of we see what kind of airflow that is. So that's about 400 or 441 pounds a minute, which is the equivalent of 410 horsepower, and that occurs at 0.8 or 1.8 pressure ratio, which is the equivalent of this is 11.76 psi. So from 410 horsepower at 11.76 psi, we can get 78% efficient, and that goes all the way out to right here. We'll draw our line down as straight as we can. That's about 66 pounds a minute, which is the equivalent of 660 horsepower. And that occurs at a corresponding pressure ratio of 2.7. Or if we look at it in terms of boost, this is about right here, this is about 25 PSI. All you have to do is multiply 1.7, and we subtract one from that, 1.7 times 14.7, that will give us a boost level. So you can see this turbo is 78% efficient from 410 horsepower <clears throat> at 11 and three quarter pounds, all the way up to 660 horsepower at 25 PSI, meaning that you could run a lot of different combinations and still be in the island of maximum efficiency. If we go up here, we look at 0.76, it's slightly less efficient, but different combinations, 0 0.74, 0 0.72, all different levels of efficiency, but also different levels of airflow and boost. So you can run this at a bunch of different boost levels on a bunch of different combinations and hopefully be somewhere in this map. Now let's take a look at this line right here. This is the surge line, and I'm gonna tell you why the surge line is so important. Okay, guys, let's get into uh, compressor surge. This is our surge line right here. And from there, it goes all the way down. You can see starts here and goes all the way up. So what is compressor surge and why is it bad? Well, compressor surge, basically, if you look up the definition, aerodynamic instability or oscillation or even reverse flow, and it's bad because what happens is for sustained like aggressive surge, you can actually destroy the turbo. You can actually destroy the compressor wheel, which obviously is not good. And I'm gonna show you how you get a turbo into surge and therefore how you would avoid it. And what the surge line is for me, just like I've kind of redefined the other areas, for me, the surge line shows why you don't run too small of a uh, NA combination with too big of a turbo. A lot of guys will say, hey, look in the comments, Richard, I want to run like a one liter motor that makes 100 horsepower, but I want to put a thousand horsepower turbo on it because that way I can run from 100 to 1000 and run it at any power level that I want. And I'm going to show you why that doesn't work. So if we take, uh, this is a good example and using extreme examples helps illustrate the point. So if we take our 100 horsepower motor, we know that if we have a 100 horsepower motor and the, the patented Holdner power boost formula comes from what I've learned about compressor maps. So what that, what that formula says is that a naturally aspirated motor is running under one atmospheric pressure, is running under 14.7 pounds of atmospheric pressure. So we know that if we double that atmospheric pressure by running 14.7 pounds of boost on top of our NA motor, we can theoretically double the power output. And though there are reasons why that might not happen, you have to make sure that you have intercooling and good fuel and enough timing and all those things, but you can double the power output of your NA power of the NA power output of the motor you're starting with at 14.7 pounds of boost. So if we take our 100 horsepower motor and we run 14.7 pounds of boost, which would be our 2.0, we would ma be making 200 horsepower. So 200 horsepower <laughs> is going to be, uh, we're gonna go ahead and unzoom that. 200 horsepower would be 
you know, somewhere right here. It would be outside the surge line. But this gets even worse. What if we wanted to make 300 horsepower with our one liter motor? Well, it would take another atmosphere. So we would have to be up near here in our pressure ratio. And our 300 horsepower at 3.0 uh, pressure ratio or basically 2 bar or 29.4 pounds of boost would occur and we were making 300 horsepower, we would be about right here. So if we see that, we are a long ways away from our surge line, which is right there, and we're a little bit right here. The problem with this is this is why we can't run this size, our 1,000 horsepower or near 1,000 horsepower turbo on our 100 horsepower NA motor because we would be way into surge even if we were trying to run lots and lots of boost with it and make lots and lots of power, it just wouldn't work. What would happen is this turbo would go into surge and maybe catastrophically destroy itself. That's the surge line and that's why it's very important to select the turbo, not just for the power output that you wanna make, making sure that the turbo is big enough, but also make sure that it's not too big for your naturally aspirated combination. Okay guys, we've taken a look at what happens when we cross our surge line by trying to run too small of a motor and too big of a turbo, but what happens on the other end of the map? Like what happens out here? What is the maximum flow for this turbo and how much power can it, can it support? Well, as luck would have it for the guys looking at turbos, most of the manufacturers that have compressor maps, they also list the maximum flow of the turbo in pounds, of, pounds per minute. They make it very easy for you. Hey, this thing flows 100 in four pounds per minute and it'll support over a thousand horsepower let's say a thousand forty if we use our multiplier but it's very important to understand two things one the maximum flow rate and how much power you can make but also what boost level does this occur at so if we see our maximum flow which is i'm going to go ahead and get rid of myself here but our maximum flow occurs like right in this area so we'll say that this is we'll draw our boost pressure line here so this is 36.75 PSI. And they know what you're thinking. That's, that's where we get our maximum flow. If we draw our line down right here of 100, let's say it's 104 pounds per minute. So let's say we've made 1,040 horsepower, but we have to do it, to enable to do it in order to make that power, we have to run 36.75 pounds of boost or somewhere near that. I know what you're thinking, Richard, this is a turbo. Why can't we just turn the boost up? You can. Let's say we turn the boost up to like 45 pounds, which is gonna be our 4.1 number right here. So it's right here. The problem is that at our 4.1 number, which is 45 pounds of boost, we are flowing, look, less air. So we're at 98 or 99 pounds a minute. So we're making 980 or 990 horsepower at that higher boost level. And we get this all the time. Guys, hey, Richard, I turned the boost up and I didn't make any more power. And this is why you've turned the boost up and the flow actually went down. The other thing that's happening is you can see, if you look at these kinds of numbers, this 97K and this 84K, these are all impeller speeds. And as we go way out here, we see, and see here's 105, we trace this number, trace this line around, we're over speeding the turbo. And that's part of the problem. Just like on the third side, we can run into problems with the compressor wheel. If we over speed it on the other side, we can also run into problems with the compressor wheel and catastrophic damage can occur if we try to over speed this. So it's very important. Hey, Richard, if I can't turn the boost up and make more power, how do I get it to make that power output at that boost level? Well, the way that you do that is you combine this turbo with the right size naturally aspirated accommodation, so you use the Holdener Power Boost formula. That way, we make that airflow and that power output at that boost level by starting with the right NA combination. Now let's take a look at a couple of examples. Now that we understand a little bit more about the compressor map, let's take a look at a couple of examples and see if we can plot them successfully on the map and you guys can follow along and see. Uh, the first one is a 5.3 liter. This was the L33, the all aluminum motor that I got from the wrecking yard. We ran it with the uh, Brian Tooley Racing truck Norris camshaft. Otherwise it was kind of stock. We naturally put bigger injectors in it. And then we did run this with a turbo. We didn't run it with this turbo, but we're, <laughs> we're going to plug it in as though we had run this turbo and see where it would fit given its combination of 
power output and boost level because we know both of those and I'm also going to talk to you about how you would plug in or plot a combination when you only know one of those things. So let's take a look. This is our 5.3 liter. It made 633 horsepower which is going to be somewhere near this line and did that at 7.4 pounds. So that's pretty low. That's going to be down here right in this range here. I'll go ahead and zoom in and it's going to be right in this range here. So you can see we're at a pretty low uh, efficiency. We're in the 62 to 63%, but it is on the map and it's still making, you know, we knew it made good power because it did very well at just 7.4 pounds. Now we'll take a look at another combination. This was actually a combination that we ran with an S475 from the guys at Summit Racing. This was a six liter and we made 923 horsepower which is going to kind of be over in this area. And we did it at 15.3 PSI, which will be right over here. Cause we could see if we drew over here, it's a little bit more than our, uh, 14.7 pounds and we can see this is our intersection with about 923 horsepower so again we're still on the low part of the map but it is on the map and we know that this did well it did good power but it shows us maybe there's a better combination of turbo that we could put on either one of these combinations and be you know in a little bit better position in terms of island of efficiency let's take a look at one more final combination and that was actually the 3800 the little v6 that we also ran with the turbo now that combination produced 533 horsepower which is going to be kind of in this range right here and did so at 12.6 pounds so a little bit less than our 2.0 number so it's going to be here and here this kind of puts us right in the island <laughs> 0.78 or 78% efficiency. So it shows that a big turbo like this, making this kind of power at that boost level on our little 3800 would put it at 78% efficient, which actually is a pretty efficient level for that particular motor. So there you have it. But, I, but now that we've taken a look at three combinations and plug them on the map, what happens if we just know the naturally aspirated power? Okay, let's take one final example. What happens if we have a naturally aspirated motor that we know the power output is, and that's always beneficial. That way we can plot this thing on the map. If we have a naturally aspirated motor and we want to know how much boost it's going to take to make a given power output. So let's say we have a 300 horsepower motor. Let's say we have a 3800 that we've hopped up, or we maybe have an Atlas motor. But at any rate, we have a 300 horsepower motor. We want to make 800. So how much boost does that take? I'm going to show you a little shortcut. So if we take 800 and divide it by 300, so we take the power output that we want, we divide it by the power output that we have, we get 2.66666 into infinity. The cool thing is that 2.66 tells us the pressure ratio that we need to run to make 800 horsepower starting with 300 horsepower. So this is a top secret thing. So don't tell anybody about it. Actually, you could tell everybody. So, but this gives us the pressure ratio. So if we take a look over here, we see 2.7, 2.66 is going to be right below that. And if we draw a line across there and we wanted to make 800 horsepower, which is going to be about right there, we see that we can make 800 horsepower at minus one equals times 14.7. So this is gonna take 24 and a half pounds of boost to make our 300 horsepower actually produce 800 horsepower. And if we did it with this particular supercharger, we would be in the 74% efficiency island on this map. Hopefully this helps. Please let make sure to comment, but please make sure to like, share, subscribe, ring the bell, do all that stuff. But most importantly, leave comments. Let me know if you have questions. Are there other things that I need to cover on compressor maps?